Hi guys, Harry here. Welcome to Scrap Science. Alright, part 3 of our lithium ion battery extraction series. At this point in the extraction, I've decided to kind of move on from extracting lithium from our batteries. Lithium has hurt me too many times, and we're now going to focus on extracting cobalt. If you'll remember last episode, we dissolved up some battery electrode materials with sulfuric acid, dropped out all of the manganese, and then dropped out the rest of the transition metals, that being cobalt and nickel, along with aluminium, from solution, uh, leaving us with this precipitate here. This was done by adding calcium hydroxide to solution, which ultimately means that this precipitate here probably contains calcium sulfate, along with hydroxides of aluminium, calcium, cobalt, and nickel. So, the plan from here on is to extract the cobalt and nickel, and then eventually separate the cobalt and the nickel from each other. Which isn't the easiest thing to do, but we are going to have a go. I think I've got a pretty good method of doing it. Now the first step in trying to process all of this material here is to get all of the actual transition metals out. As I said before, we have aluminium and calcium in here as contaminants, so the best way I can think um, to get our transition metals out and leave behind um, the aluminium and calcium is to try something that we did in the last video but didn't quite work out. Um, the plan is electrolysis. If we dissolve everything back into solution, we should be able to perform electrolysis on our mixture of metals in solution, yielding cobalt and nickel on the cathode, provided we make sure that the solution isn't too acidic as we do the process. As it turns out, I think I've got a way to do this. Um, what we're going to first do is add a whole bunch of distilled water to the mixture of hydroxides. Now you might think that we'd have to add a whole bunch of acid, sulfuric acid probably, in order to dissolve up everything here, all of the precipitate, to electrolyze it. And you'd be right if we actually needed absolutely everything to be dissolved. Luckily, we don't have to do that. All we have to do is add just a catalytic amount of sulfuric acid. And what this should do, once it all dissolves in, is dissolve just a small amount of our hydroxide precipitate. If we electrolyze this, it should still give us the metals that we want, uh, the cobalt and nickel on the cathode, but adding just a small amount of acid has the benefit that the hydroxide precipitate in the beaker will act as a pH buffer to keep our solution very close to neutral during the entire course of running the cell. We determined that this was the reason our electrolysis procedure didn't work out in the previous video. Our solution was just too acidic. I'm going to go ahead and allow the sulfuric acid to dissolve as much of that precipitate as possible, and then I'm going to start electrolysis. Now that our sulfuric acid has done its job of dissolving our precipitate, we're ready. To do this, you may have noticed that we have upgraded our setup quite considerably. First of all, um, we have a new DC power supply with current and voltage control, 30 volts, 10 amps. Um, this may have made it into the last video, I'm not sure which order everything's going to be uploaded in. But no longer do we have to use an ATX power supply coupled with a buck converter to do all of our electrolysis. We have the real stuff. We also have proper cables and proper alligator clips. Additionally, I think this is the first video where we'll actually be using the platinum electrode that I've had for an extremely long time, but it's never made it into a video um, since I tested it, I think, and showed it to be genuine. Genuinely, every time I try to use it for anything, um, the experiment or the reaction or the video just doesn't work out. So hopefully um, we can break that trend this time and actually get this platinum electrode into um, a video on my channel. Anyway, to electrolyze our nickel and cobalt out of solution, I have some nickel strips as the cathode. They'll sit in the solution just like that. And our platinum anode will be inserted into the solution like this. Connecting everything up. And we should be good to go. With everything connected, I'll turn it all on. Now, if we turn up the voltage, we should start to see some current flowing. 0.3 amps sounds like a good place to start. We expect the cobalt and nickel to plate onto the cathode, probably with significant hydrogen formation as well, while the anode should generate oxygen gas along with hydrogen ions 
to replace the cobalt or nickel ions that we're losing on the cathode. Um, the resulting sulfuric acid that we make will go on to react with further hydroxide precipitate in the bottom of the beaker. And as a result, the small amount of sulfuric acid um, acts as a catalyst because it's regenerated. That's the idea at least. Now that the cell's been running for 12 hours or so, let's get a look at the cathode. As you might note, not much has really happened, but we can see the formation of a small amount of metal on the corners of the nickel strips. That's a very promising sign. What we actually need to do now, I think, is increase the current density, because this will try at least to favor the reduction of metal ions over the reduction of hydrogen ions here. I'm going to increase the current all the way to 1.5 amps. And that's where we'll leave it, I think. Alrighty, one day in, we'll get another look at the cathode now. You can see we have quite a bit of cobalt and nickel growing on the cathode there. It's not very well adhered and it's very dendritic um, and it will really come off really easily. So I'm gonna start putting most of this into a beaker. A whole lot has actually fallen off the cathode and fallen into the cell. I'm not thinking that is too much of a problem because uh, what we can do is once we're finished, we can fish around with the leftover precipitate with a magnet and because both cobalt and nickel uh, ferromagnetic, um, that should work out really nicely. But now that everything is proceeding nicely and we can see it is slowly working, it's not very efficient, but it is working. I'm going to leave this going at one and a half amps for however long it needs to um, electrolyze out most of that cobalt and nickel. Additionally, I will be giving it a stir every now and again um, just to make sure that the sulfuric acid that we're generating as a byproduct does actually go on to react with the hydroxide precipitate at the bottom of the beaker. A couple of days in, I'm sorry about the noise of the power supply. Um, I wasn't quite aware of how noisy it was going to be when I bought it. Um, we're just going to have to cope with that while the cell is running. Now, after those two days, um, that I've left this cell running, I have deliberately decided to not stir around the beaker simply because I want to see what happens if we allow um, the sulfuric acid concentration to build up as we plate out our transition metals and see whether the concentration of sulfuric acid that we get is high enough to start dissolving um, some of the hydroxide precipitate down the bottom of the beaker. From observing what happens, um, you can probably actually notice there the colour of the solution in the beaker has gotten considerably lighter than when we started. So we have successfully removed transition metals uh, from solution and that has been happening faster than the transition metals have been dissolving in from the hydroxide precipitate. So um, I think it is a good idea to continually stir it, you know, once a day um, to keep things dissolved and keep things plating out. But also, within those two days of running the cell, you can see we have also collected quite a bit of transition metals. Um, the only two we expect are, of course, nickel and cobalt. Um, we have a fair bit in this beaker, and we have considerably more actually in the cell um, ready to be harvested. The dendrites on the cathode aren't growing quite as large as they were at the very start, so um, I'm more comfortable with just letting it go without harvesting the metal for quite some time. And additionally, just to prove to you that this is um, nickel or cobalt, or a combination of the two, I have here a permanent magnet. If we put that close to the metal we've extracted, you can see that it is strongly ferromagnetic, which is exactly what we expect from the elements of nickel and cobalt. So clearly, this process um, is, so far at least, an excellent success and I'm gonna continue doing it um, until hopefully we completely remove all of the cobalt and nickel from solution, or at least as close to complete removal as we can get.
two weeks on from starting our electrolysis, you can see we have uh, made a reasonable quantity of our cobalt and nickel mixture. Um, this is everything I've harvested off the cathode from our cell, and we've had it running at about one and a half amps um, this whole time. As I said earlier in the video, I've been periodically stirring up the mixture and I've actually had to add a little bit more sulfuric acid a couple of times in order to make sure that we are actually dissolving um, our hydroxide precipitate at the bottom of the beaker. You will notice that after these two weeks of running the cell, um, we haven't you know, generated all that much cobalt and nickel. It's a horrifically inefficient process, clearly, um, but it is working very, very slowly. And in an ideal world, I would continue running the cell for another couple of weeks in order to get all of the cobalt and nickel out of solution because clearly from the color there um, you can see that there is a lot of transition metal content still in there. Sadly though we're out of time for this experiment because I have to go back to uni tomorrow um, and I won't be here to supervise this cell for another four months so uh, we're gonna have to turn this off. I'm going to store the contents of this beaker, save them for later when I will do further extraction of the cobalt and nickel um, at a later date. I'll probably do that off camera but by the time we come to the point where we are ready to separate the cobalt and nickel from this metal that we have extracted, um, we will have a little bit more to work with. This is probably a fine amount to do a proof of concept of the separation, but you know, I will eventually extract everything from the cobalt and nickel in solution here. Once again, we've grown trees of nickel and cobalt metal on our nickel electrode there and I'm going to add those to our beaker full of metal that we've extracted. You can see our platinum electrode here is completely unscathed by the reaction um, so that just goes to show the inertness of the platinum electrode. And look after everything's processed um, and I was able to retrieve um, a whole bunch of metal actually out of the electrolyte using a magnet. Um, we have extracted over two weeks uh, 10 grams of a cobalt nickel mixture. So it's really not much. As I said, it's horrifically inefficient. But we did get cobalt and nickel and we will separate the two in a future video. So a bit of a short video for today, but we will finish this project a bit later. See you then.